Got it out the mud, they respect that me Always spread the love when I get back, you Got your hand out, that's a bitch move, you Always complaining like a bitch do me Still right here with who I came with, me Self came, my circles on the same shit, you Got a different Hey yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Kip Vegito here today, back with another tutorial. Sorry for the long break, I had some stuff to take care of, and I did not have my computer. So today I'll be showing you how to make this in Cinema 4D. This is kind of like medium, complex a little bit. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, and let's get to it. So first off, let's uh, let's create a plane, and um get our textures and stuff so let's first off let's go into our render set render settings right here click this go into output and the width and height make it 1920 by 1080 all right so now that's done let's go ahead and lock that ratio too so click that now that that's done let's go ahead and make a sphere so in this cube tab right here parametric objects let's grab that sphere and pull it up make sure it's above the surface so if you want to like get it accurate just click on this uh, window right here and you'll get these viewports you want to make that all the way up to touching now you want to do is click on the sphere go into our segments right here and make it 100 if you want to know what this does this makes it like look more round and more like a dense sphere so as we can see in our um, in our segments view, we have like a lot of uh, polys. But if we lower this down, it looks lower. And if we keep if we keep going down, it gets less and less and less. So yeah, let's make that a hundred. Oh, all right. So let's go ahead and press C. Now what you want to do is make a new material and drag this material onto the sphere. Now let's go ahead and set this thing up. So click on the sphere. Let's make that color black. Let's go into our reflectance. If you have a specular, remove it. Um, go ahead and add a Beckman layer and then go to your layer Fresnel and make it dielectric. Now that's done. Uh, yeah, that's all you gotta do for the texturing. Click on the sphere, click this polygon right here, polygon mode, then go to the top and go to select right here and choose loop select and select like one line that goes all the way across. Then what you want to do is make a new material, go to luminance right here, make the brightness 300 and also go into your illumination right here at the bottom and check GI area light. Now let's go back to our illumination and let's make it green. Like a bright green, I guess. Also, let's uncheck that color channel. Now that's done. Drag that material onto the selected lines and boom. We have our simple sphere. Now let's go ahead and make our plane bigger and stuff. So let's click on the plane Click on the scale tool right here and just drag out until it takes up the full viewport. Now that that's done, create a camera. So go to create and go to camera. Click on this camera and go to cinema. Right click on it. Go to protection right here. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. So what this protection tag does, it's make sure it's that it make <laughs> it makes sure your camera does not move around so if you try to move around in it you can't do it and also if you like if you're like very noobish at this click on this little box right here to go in and out of your camera view so next thing you want to do is we want to get these spheres to all fall apart you want to have like multiple spheres so click on the sphere Go to MoGraph right here and go to Cloner. Put this sphere under the cloner and then out down here in mode, make sure it's on grid array. Drag this up and then 
make the count two by two by two and then let's uh, make it more spaced out let's add a third one on the top make it more all right so that's good next thing you want to do is click on is look at your cloner and right click go to cinema 4d tags no no no. go to simulation tags and choose rigid body and then make sure dynamics go to the dynamics right here and make sure that's checked dynamics on go to collision and where it says individual elements choose all and then if we press if we press play it should all fall apart and it doesn't wow that sucks well that was a fail on my part so now to fix that you have your plane right here right click on it go to simulation tags and choose collider body let's drag this all the way back and press play again and it falls apart if you're like if it doesn't fall apart and everything isn't on the ground just go ahead and uh go to your frames right here and make this last one to like 500 frames and then drag this out to have it more now let's go ahead and press play again let me go into my camera view and find which one i like the most Now we just want to let it out and play. And I like that. So I'm going to press pause right there. And let that be done. And that's it for our cube, I mean our sphere setup. Now we move on to the texturing of the plane. So let me go ahead and grab this texture up real quick. Also, I get my textures from uh, cgtextures.com. They have a lot of textures, a lot of libraries of them. So you can like check that out. Like lots of high res textures and everything. Yeah. Uh, it's very cool, you know, all that stuff. I'm going to be loading in like a simple concrete texture. So you can do that. Or you can just go to Google and just search concrete texture. And then grab anything you want to make sure it looks nice and neat and that's it so let me just load in this texture let me go with this all right now if you have when you have your texture right click on the uh, click on this arrow and go to copy channel then go to bump and click on it. Now go to the texture right here and choose paste. Click on this arrow again, go to filter, click on the filter and make sure the saturation is zero. Now you won't have the same texture as me, but think of this. Every part that's white is where like it will stand out. That's where the bump will like be high. And every part that's black, it will be lower. Like there will be low places. So let's uh Click on enable clipping. Let's make this high clip kind of high. Let's make this kind of low. So it really stands out. Now, what you want to do is click on that texture right here and copy channel. Go to reflectance and remove the specular. Add a Beckman layer. And in the uh, layer color, you want to paste that in. Now it's going to be different in the reflectance layer. See, as you can see, it's like too black. You want to like soften that up. So let's uh, make that kind of like that. Let's make this brightness come up. So. Also, I know this too. Everywhere where it's like black, that's where the reflection will not be high. And where it's completely white, that's where reflection will be high. Simple as that. Now in the roughness, let's make that like 10%. Go to your Fresno down here. Let's make it dielectric. Now that's done. And now we can drag it on to this 
plane right here. Click on the plane. And our texture is everywhere. It's not looking neat right now and it's kind of blurry. So click on the material again, go to edit around here. And the texture preview size, make sure it's on no scaling. And now let's click on the texture right here in the objects tab. Check seamless. And then the UVW mapping, make sure it's on cubic. Go back into your camera view. Let's make the tiles like 0.5 and then 0.5. So I like that. Let's go ahead and give it a test render. And as you can see, it looks completely trash right now. Like, it's bad, bro. What you want to do now is go into your render settings, go to effect, and choose global illumination. Now, go into your presets right here and choose exterior preview. That will make it kind of fast a little bit if you have a bad PC. Let's go ahead and give it a render. And now that's a huge difference from what we just had. Uh, let's see what else. Now what we need is like big lights. Yeah. So as you can see in this image, we have this HDR, these reflections. Really nice reflections in there. So let's go ahead and make a, a new material. Also, before we go ahead and load in the, the new lighting, let's go ahead and save this scene, just in case we crash. Let's see. All right. So now what we want to do is grab an HDR image. If you don't know what an HDR is, it's like a light source of realism, I guess. I don't really know how to explain it. But I get my HDRs from SIBL Archive. I will have this link in the description. It's all from HDR Labs. Very nice HDRs, very high resolutions as you can see. 8000 by 4000 and all that's awesome. So let me go ahead and uh, do this real quick. All right, so to load in your HDR image, what you wanna do is just find your image right here and put it into I mean colors will work too like simple color maps but it won't be as neat as it should be you need to have a dot HDR for it to really stand out so let's uh, get that in Next, what you want to do is go to create, go to sky, I mean, go to environment, and go to sky. Drag that HDR onto the sky and then render. And as you can see, our lighting is completely different. And wow, see, our reflection stands out. That's how we gather really nice reflections and everything. It looks like a wet surface as it just been rained on or something like that. Now we know how to set that all up. Now we can just load in our Roblox character or head and call it a day. So let me go ahead and load in mines real quick. Also, I did a tutorial on this. Well, not a tutorial, but a fix video or whatever. See, our character is too small. All you want to do is click on the character, go to that scale tool, and just drag up. Keep dragging, keep dragging, and eventually it'll get to the normal size. And as you can see, our character is kind of transparent. So what you want to do is open that material, and the transparency just uncheck, uncheck, and uncheck. I'm going to delete that material too, because I don't need it right now. And since we're just working with the head, I would just delete all the body parts. And I will also delete this group, so to do that, just right click on the group and click delete without children. Also, you will see that our axis point is not aligned with the head. So to fix that, go to mesh, axis center, and, you know, axis center, and then click execute. Then just drag that down. I'm going to make the head bigger.
and I'm going to put that aligned with the ground. So let's load in our material, our uh, character's material. So create new material right down here. Double click on it, and let's uh, go ahead and grab that texture of the character. Make sure you go into editor, default to no scaling. Let's set up our reflectance. So click on that, check it, remove the specular. Always remove the specular. Go to add and choose Beckman. And go into the Fresnel and choose dielectric. Let's drag that onto the man's head. Let's rotate it to our face. It's kind of facing the camera. Our scene is pretty much done. Let's go ahead and give it a test render. And boom, that looks awesome. The reflections are nice. Everything is nice. And that's it for the tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Um, like, subscribe for more tutorials. And uh, I will have the project file under the description if you want it. So go ahead. I will not have the HDR image. And I will not have this concrete texture. I will have alternate ones for you. But yeah. Well, no, I won't have alternate ones for you. I want you to make the textures yourself. <laughs> so yeah. If you follow along, always make sure you make something different from what tutorial is. Make something completely different. Have your own style and everything, man. Thanks for the tutorial. Thanks for watching. And I'm out of here. Shout out to the Vegetable Gang, yo. Um, peace.